Welcome back to the nest peeps. In today's video, we're going to paint some Menoth jacks. As some of you may recall, I have been painting the Menoth half to the Mark II starter box for demo games at my local game shop. My local game shop being looking for games in Bristol, Pennsylvania. If you happen to be in the area, we meet every other Saturday at Looking for Games for our local nerd night where we play War Machine and Hordes. If you happen to be in the area, swing on by and say hello. This is not a paid advertisement or anything from Looking for Games. I just like to let anyone who's in the local area know that there is a group of people that play War Machine right here in Bristol, Pennsylvania. But back to the painting. As I stated earlier, we're going to be painting the jacks in the metal half of the Mark II starter box today. I have already painted the unit that came in that box. You can check that video out here. But that's enough of that. Let's just jump straight on into the painting. Everything from this group of metal that I've been painting was primed black and given a white Senethal highlight from above. Now, I've painted all of the jacks here in pretty much the same manner, so we're going to be focusing in on the Vanquisher for this video purely for consistency. First up, we're going to base coat all the areas we want to be white with Iraqi sand from Vallejo. This will help give us that warm white tone that we're going for. Then with the more detail-oriented Sotar 2020, I start to establish the highlights with some off-white from Vallejo. I'm taking my time with this, focusing in on the center, and trying not to blow out the entire area with this white. And to kick off the brushwork, we're going to start painting in all of the mechanical areas here with some Vallejo model color gunmetal. Just trying to take my time and not get any of this silver on those white areas that we've established. Then we move on to base coating all of our trim here with some Vallejo model color dark red. These metal models are filled with all kinds of trim and detail work, and these steps take way longer than expected. Once all of our red areas have been established, we come in with some Army Painter Pure Red, and we start to establish our highlights. And because this is being painted to be played with on the table, I didn't go absolutely crazy with the contrast here. I just took it up enough so that it's noticeable. I just take my time, slowly work around the model, sketching in rough highlights to all of our red areas. I'm using this pure red as a glaze for these highlights because when applied in multiple layers, you can get a really nice transitioning effect from this, covering less and less surface area with each subsequent layer. This is another one of those steps on these models that took way longer than I had expected. And then the final step to our red areas here is establishing that final edge highlight. Next up we paint all of the metallic areas that I didn't paint silver with glorious gold from Vallejo. I like to add two metallic colors to my models like this because it helps break everything up to the eye and helps us stand out a little bit more. Plus, it's Menoth. Menoth needs gold. Menoth loves gold. Even all of the spikes are gold. Purely because of the rule of cool. And then we paint these areas around these uh, exhaust vents here gold because we just need to break up that big chunk of silver in the middle of this model. Then we base coat this little cloth flappy thing here black because I want it to match with the cloth bits on the exemplars that we painted in an earlier video. One of those little details that'll really tie the force together. And then the time came for the most nerve wracking part of this entire paint job. Trying to paint in these little symbols here without getting any black paint on our white panels. However, this is not impossible to do. You just have to have a lot of patience and good brush control. As you actually might be able to see on this one symbol over here, 
At one point, my paint seemed to have gotten a little overhydrated from my wet palette, and it ran into the white area. I was able to get rid of most of it with a dry brush, sponging it up. However, it still left a slight black stain in the area, so I stippled in some Iraqi sand to mask it up a little bit also re-establishing the centers of each of these symbols. And then with field gray from scale 75, I sketch in some rough highlights on this cloth. This is the same way we highlighted the robes on our exemplars. Then with cold gray from Vallejo, I'm going to start sketching in and establishing all of the areas on this model that I want to glow. Areas such as the tops of the vent stacks, these little hoses here on the gun of the Vanquisher. I kind of envision them as like glowing fuel tubes. Once all the areas we want to glow have been established, we come in with some pure white and we add that to the centers of all of these areas, leaving the outer edges still that cold gray color. Again, we can't rush this step, we've just got to take our time with it. After establishing those areas, I felt it was best to get the wash step out of the way in the event I end up having to clean up any of those glowing areas anyway. Don't want to have to paint them twice. Now this is dark tone wash from Army Painter, and I'm being very meticulous with how I place it. We're not just drenching the whole model in it, we want to be very specific with our applications. However, there are areas like this wrecking ball where we can be a little bit more haphazard with it. Then with a really, really, really tiny brush, we come in here with some dark tone wash and we add some black lining to help add some separation between some of these surfaces and add a little bit of depth. Taking our time, trying to get nice, clean, long strokes so we can get that wash exactly where we need it and nowhere else. Once I'm done playing around with the dark tone wash, we come in with some fluorescent yellow from Army Painter and we glaze that over top all of those white areas that we established earlier. The hoses, the vents, everything that we wanted to glow. I absolutely love doing glow effects with fluorescent paints, mostly because it's quick and the end result looks fantastic. After we've finished painting in all the fluorescent yellow areas, the paint job is finished. Now it's time to start working on the base. First thing I did was painted the floor of this base brown and then I painted the rim black. You could also paint the rim black at the very end, but for whatever reason, this is the way I do it. Once the rim is dried, the next thing I do is I apply some white PVA glue to the base floor. And then with an old beat up paintbrush, I spread that around the entirety of the base. You want to make sure that the entire surface of the base is covered in the PVA glue. Then I come in with my fine grain sand mixture here and I apply that to the entirety of the base. Then using my fingers to tap on the side of the handle to shift the sand into place and then dumping out the excess. Using an old dry brush, I wipe off all of the sand that's still kinda sticking to the base and the rest of the model. Really trying to make sure that the feet are free of any sand. Once the glue has dried on the sand, we come in with some strong tone wash from Army Painter and we apply this to the entire surface. This is my go-to method for dirt texture on bases because it lets you work around the model while it's already attached to the base. Then coming in with some more PVA glue, I apply this in little patchy areas randomly around the base. And then using that same old brush, I spread it around a bit, trying to form a somewhat organic shape. And with zero finesse, I dump some static grass from Army Painter on those little glue patches that we established. I do not own a static grass applicator, so this is my method. Seems to work out just fine. And once that is dried, we come in with the PVA glue once more. This time we're just putting little dots down for some tufts. I chose the yellow flower tufts because I really like the way that it looks and kind of accents 
the fluorescent yellow energy sections of this model. Once all of the PVA glue had dried, I put the arc markings on the bases to these models and I varnished everything in ultra matte varnish from AK Interactive. I'm a huge fan of the ultra matte varnish from AK and I varnish almost everything in it. Here you have all three Menoth jacks from this starter set and I must say do they look imposing. As you can see, I've been sticking with the traditional red and white Menoth look. Although I may have tweaked things a little bit, it's still visibly a Menoth army with the Menoth paint scheme. I wanted to keep kind of a traditional look to this Menoth army, seeing as how it's going to be used for demo games. I wanted whoever uses this, if they decide to go look at Menoth, they like the way the army looks, and kind of just know right off the bat, oh, this was the army that I was playing because the artwork will still be very similar. So let me know, what did you think of how I painted up these Menoth Jacks? And how did you paint up your Menoth Jacks? Let me know in the comments section down below. And again, if you are in the Pennsylvania area looking for a group of people to play War Machine and Hordes with, give Looking for Games a shot and come by and say hello. Remember to like, share, subscribe, all that other social media stuff. As for now, I've got to fly. Keep on painting, peeps.